What is up guys, this is your one and only Wild Rocker, and today I'm going to be doing a part 2 of the discussion of Are We the Bad Guys from Destiny. Now, I know a lot of people have already seen my uh, part 1 video, and they are starting to speculate and starting to have opinions of their own of Are We the Bad Guys? We don't know. Um, a lot of things are starting to point to that issue of we are the reason why the humans or the human race besides what we have in our tower is extinct it's really strange because a lot of people were actually commenting and uh, mentioning a lot of other things that i did not even recognize one being is that in order to kill oryx we had to be ascendant now where have we heard that word before we've heard it through atheon where he had ascendant energy during the Volta Glass. We had radiant and ascendant energy and shards. Maybe that might link up, but before we get into that discussion, okay, in order to even face the wrath or the presence of Oryx, we had to become ascendant. If this is true, where the ascendant are the purest of darkness, you know, the purest of, of any dark enemy can be. Then we deliberately, at a time, during the story, became dark. But why did we become dark? Was it because that we had to be ascendant to go through the portal, as they say, to defeat Oryx, the almighty king of darkness? Or did we become dark because we were forced to by Eris. You know, there was a lot of things behind Eris that we didn't need, really want to do, but we did it anyway. For example, we took a piece of Crota from his old uh, shard that we destroyed. We have taken a uh, sample of Crota during his AKA funeral which she mentions it was a death ceremony. Now, even if we were people of the light, don't you find it really odd and really dark of us to invade, even if it's an enemy, to invade their ceremony of a king's death? You know, even if to groups that are going at it and that are in a, you know, crazy flat-out war. We don't necessarily need to show them any signs of weakness, but we can show them signs of respect, because we've already did what we wanted to do. We've killed the Taken King's son. But the fact that we go back there, literally interrupt their little ceremony, just to get what we want, it's kind of dark when you think about it. <clears throat> it really makes you think, you know, are we good? Because that's really evil for what we did. You know, we interrupted a death ceremony to have their moment of silence to kind of grief over their crota that they once knew, you know, and to have his father sit there and deal with a dead son as we continue to do what we do, supposedly protect the light but it's starting to get really suspicious really suspicious i don't think necessarily that we are the original protectors of the light we've already seen guardians in the past that have died and are we on that same bandwagon where we all are going to end up dead too for example we've seen the guardian that protected the light and tried to fend off the hive when we did the Dark Below mission. We would try to find out who he was, what he was doing, and he ended up unfortunately dying. But, as they say, he underestimated the Hive. He was destroyed by the enemies of darkness, there to rot on the moon. Or, we could take this from a different point of view. Maybe he realized what he was doing was intentionally wrong and finally broke away from the standard, you know, 
things that the speaker told us to do and committed suicide. There is no proof of any hive at all that have killed him. All we have on proof on that is words. We do not have any verbal proof. We, there's no verbal damage or verbal. There's no visual damage to him whatsoever. During the story for hunters in their new subclass, we find yet another guardian that has discovered something that unfortunately died. Maybe he realized that he didn't want any part of this. Or the power that consumed his body was dark. Another thing, even with class items and weapons in, in general, for hunters back in year one, there was a certain exotic helmet that quote says, you know, all I wanted to do was grab the light, but the darkness consumed me. And it was that certain helmet that people have seen. It was only back in year one that was like getting taken over by this like virus, aka the darkness. Well, what does this have to do with Guardians of Hunters? Maybe that they were starting to finally realize that we were going to be part of darkness. And they want to get out. And maybe that's why Cade wants to get out too, because he knows that this is going to all end badly. You know, he doesn't want to be that main person of in charge of Hunters and realize, you know, hey, they're starting to figure out, you know, they're fighting for a wrong uh, cause, and he probably wants to get out. That could be speculation. And once again, that's just an opinion. You know, it's not the real, you know, full-on proof. <clears throat> and as I mentioned in my last video, with, um, the, and I called them the leaders, you know, like Corbre, you know, and so on and so on, of specific uh, guardians. But for the leader of the Titans, like I said in my last video, he mentioned that the Sunbreakers from Mercury did not like the way of how each one did things, which caused, caused a feud. And it caused a very bad relationship within the Titan community. And I'm pretty sure her name started with an O, if I'm for sure. I cannot remember or pronounce her name, but she was the most known female guardian of Titans, which was currently on Mercury. And she did not like how Titans that were not Sunbreakers did things, and, and vice versa. So maybe she realized that they were fighting for evil and decided to outcast herself on Mercury. Another thing is that in the Vaults of Glass, and in the story uh, versions of uh, Vaults of Glass and the Taken King, we see that there was certain people that would, you know, experience the Vault of Glass and, you know, was held there in captivity. This is what we believe it to be, as they died and we've seen their skeleton. But maybe he went insane from the real facts of, you know, finally realizing that we were fighting for the darkness. Not against the darkness, but for it. Maybe he went psychotic. Not only him, but many other guardians that we've idolized have written books, have written down their words about the light and the darkness. And they are very suspicious, you know, on their words. Because it seems like that they are starting to understand the cause and what was the reason of the extinction of many, many humans way back when. And even though that we are supposed to believe that it was the enemies of darkness and the enemies of different planets, such as the Fallen, the Hive, the Taken, etc., etc., that we are the people that are invading these planets when they were originally at peace. We've seen that these enemies aren't necessarily evil when we're around, but how can we prove that? Well, in the Black Garden mission, we realized that there was a heart, literally, a core in the Black Garden that gave support on one channel throughout every Vex that existed. 
when we did that mission to destroy the heart back in year one, we saw the Vex, and they did not try to attack us. Even Volta Glass, they did not try to attack us. But if we invaded their space, they would protect their own area and their own machines and would die to protect them. In a way, we invaded their personal space. We unlocked the Vault of Glass when it was not meant to be locked. It was strictly for the Vex. So we came in there, destroyed Atheon and their Templar and their Vex minions and their Minotaurs and their Hobgoblins. For what? For loot. What we did was amazingly wrong in a way. During the Black Garden, when we destroyed the heart, we saw that the Vex were praising it. Now, it could still be a bad thing that they're praising a wrong evil, but were we the people that invaded that little, you know, gathering or ritual? Yes. If the Vex did not want to kill us, they would have done that. They, they had done it in the past and they've proven it, where we actually would first go to the Black Garden and they would stay in their constant state. They could have attacked us and killed us whenever they wanted, but they did not. All that they were trying to do was to protect their heart and the Black Garden. Another thing is with the Cabal on Mars. The Cabal that we see, we automatically assume are pure evil. You know, they are minions of the darkness. But, those Cabal that we are always interacting with, like the Centurons, the Cabals, the Shields, you know, those were the outcast of the Cabal, I guess, militia. And they were kicked out because of what they did was wrong. So maybe we're underestimating Cabal as being, you know, strictly bad. Because from what we've known through the Grimoire car, it's just that those ones that we are coming in contact with are the outcasts, the anarchists. And not, I wouldn't say the entire community of Cabals or Cabal species is like that. These guys were kicked out, so it seems like that the Cabal were actually really good people, or species. It makes you think about every single thing that we've done. How it's supposedly supposed to protect the light, but merely we're kind of destroying what we've, we're supposed to protect. We got Golgoroth, Craven Light, in his pit. We got Atheon and the Black Heart that the Vex protect. We got the Cabal that kicks out its rebels. But we're still going out there and destroying everything that we want. Seems really strange when you really think about it. Really strange. So, yeah, if you guys would like to see more of these uh, videos of these speculations of are we good or are we evil, please leave a like below um, and a comment as well if you'd like to see more. Until next time, guys, this has been Wild Rocker. Peace out.